Harvest is a really great currency farming strategy. It's consistent, simple to run, and simple to sell. People want life force for a lot of different reasons, so there's always a demand for more juice. And maybe best of all, it's something you do in high tier maps, so there is a potential for big home run rewards from the league mechanic or from Eldritch Altars. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to talk about the farm strategy I've been running over the past day, Harvest. But before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, let's talk about Harvest and what makes it special as a league mechanic. All of the monsters that you kill in a Harvest give you Life Force. Life Force is used at the Heart of Crafting Station to do different crafts. It can be as simple as like reforging items with guaranteed mods on them, cold, fizz, chaos, that kind of thing. Or it can be more complicated, like re-rolling whole stacks of essences into a random different type, or delirium orbs into a random different type, or even like really complicated in-game crafting stuff like adding and removing a uh, crit mod and then a random other mod. A lot of stuff that gets very deep into meta crafting. So it's very useful, and as you can see, the quantities needed for the high-end meta crafts are quite high. 20,000 blue juice and then a sacred crystallized life force as well. Like some of the costs of doing stuff with harvest can be quite substantial so having a large supply of it is valuable and it's something that's really even more valuable throughout a league as a league matures the value of harvest juice goes up harvest is a league mechanic that scales really well with map mod effects specifically with like pack size so you know all of the map mod effect nodes that you take on the tree will increase the value of harvest and then they also have the side benefit of boosting the impact of things like eldritch altars and the necropolis mechanic without the high cost of using a strongbox setup a lot of people have been kind of priced out of that market as that has become the go-to for high tier juicers in the last few days and this is a good way to kind of replicate a lighter version of that at a absolute fraction of the cost. And finally, I think that Harvest is just kind of a fun mechanic. I just want to put that out there. That's always a question that I think is important to ask. Is it fun? And I think the answer here is yes. So let's talk about what you do. Basically, you go into a map. You can use any map, but Jungle Valley is probably the best. The boss in there does not spawn until you enter her room. And so that means you always get player Eldritch Altars and you clear out the map. You click all the altars, you try to get more quantum rarity from the altars whenever possible, then you do the harvest. Inside the harvest, you kill the dudes, they drop the juice, and there will be bosses in there. Sometimes the bosses will drop sacred blossoms. You use those in the map device and you kill Oshabi, and she's guaranteed to drop one of these, the white life force, the sacred crystallized life force, and also a unique. Sometimes that unique will be a forbidden shako, which is kind of a gamble unique. It is uh, usually bad, but then sometimes when they're good, they're worth, you know, like hundreds of divines. That's pretty rare. All of these are very bad, but, you know, eh, it would be cool if they weren't. All right, now let's kind of talk about the Atlas passives that I'm using here. I don't necessarily think that this is the perfect setup. In fact, I'm confident this is not the perfect setup. I'll kind of walk through some of the substitutions that I would recommend making, but we'll just go through uh, what I've been using thus far. And I am taking the Necropolis nodes down here in the bottom left and the top left just to kind of add more juice into the map, just starting by saying that. And then I'm taking the main harvest wheel here with bumper crop, which gives you a 50% chance to get an extra harvest in each of your maps and bountiful harvest, which gives you some extra experience. That's not really that important. It also gives you a 10% chance for all of the harvested plants to spawn an extra monster. So this can apply to the harvest bosses as well. I've had some situations where I would see that I had two harvest bosses on a single crop. Awesome. I click the button and then it spawns three. So it's a 10% chance to duplicate both the risk and the reward of doing each of the harvests in your maps. Then there's also doubling season, which gives you a 10% chance for all the harvest monsters to drop double life force. So a 10% chance to double the risk and reward and a 10% chance to double the reward. So it's kind of, as you can see, a bit of a gamble mechanic, but it is a gamble mechanic that's very much in your favor. Like, even in the worst case scenario, you're usually making money and usually quite a bit on Harvest. And then Heart, Heart of the Grove is the final notable that I took for Harvest, and it gives you a 10% chance for your unchosen crop because you have to choose between two crops. It gives you a 10% chance for the one that you didn't choose to not wilt, so you can actually get to do both of them. And it also gives you a 60% increased chance. Increased, not 60% chance total. 60% increased chance to have a tier 4 plant, one of the harvest bosses, in each of your harvests. 
Now there are two other wheels that I did not take. One of those is Call of the Grove, which is just the chance to spawn it. It's very good. I think I would ultimately recommend taking this node and not using Harvest Scarabs, but as we'll kind of get into, you're really not starved at all for Scarabs in a Harvest setup, and at least in the Atlas passive strategy I was running, I was very starved for points, so I ultimately said, you know, that's a lot of points. I will just run Harvest through Scarabs because they cost one Chaos. Ultimately, I don't think that was the right call, and I don't really think that my Atlas passive tree was perfect. I think I will probably play around with another setup and maybe even make a video about that because it might wind up being mechanically kind of different, but this is what I did for this test at least. So we learned some things and I'd kind of like to share them. So let's just get onto the last setup here, which is crop rotation. Now there's also these three branches on the way to crop rotation. They make it so that you're less likely to get that color of plants. And at least right now, the cost of life force for yellow and blue is very close. It's about one chaos for 50 life force. I think it's actually gotten a little bit better than that. I think it's like one for 48 or 49. But anyway, whatever, we'll say 50 life force for one chaos for each of these two bad boys. And then for purple, they're a little bit cheaper. They're about 55 life force for one chaos. So not as profitable as the blue and the yellow, which are basically identical. And Crop rotation is kind of a gamble on top of a gamble on top of a gamble. It makes it so that all of the plants in your harvest are tier one and then choosing to harvest a set of plants will upgrade all of the or has a chance, but a pretty high one to upgrade the plants of other colors. So basically the way that you do harvest normally is you walk around and you just look at each pair of plants and you go, I want either A or B, A or B, and then you choose A or B and then that's it. And you go through the whole set of the harvest, you know, all the crops and you choose it like that. For crop rotation, you have to actually like look at all of them first. Think about which ones you would like to be like the last one, the most upgraded one. And, you know, if you if you have like let's say it's later on in the league usually yellow is more expensive later on the, in the league because it's used for uh div card gambling div card duplication gambling so like if you walked in and you had one yellow crop remaining and a bunch of blue and purple hanging around you would upgrade all the purples and then all the blues and then hope to get like a tier four yellow that is generally the way that you'll handle crop rotation i felt that that was kind of complicated i wanted to come at this with the simplest approach not necessarily the cheapest just the simplest so i went with the harvest scarab of cornucopia which guarantees that you're going to have uh one tier four seed of each type at a minimum um so i didn't i didn't bother with crop rotation at all because that would completely invalidate the cornucopia scarab and right just keep things simple. So because of that, didn't feel like coming down and taking wild drought and slightly reducing the less valuable color of harvest was worth the points to come over this way. Now, I also took a ton of scarab nodes, as you can see. I took this scarab wheel, which is good and I think is probably worth adding into pretty much every strategy for remarkable relics. I also took, uh, you know, skittering swarms and amplified artifacts. I think those are all good. I also took a bunch of blocking nodes here to block different league mechanic scarabs that aren't very valuable. I came over here and took significant troves, which I really didn't think that was all that great. I didn't think either of those were great decisions in the end. And then I took crystalline carapaces, trapping carapaces and narrowing or harrowing carapaces. And as we can see from my returns here, I got five regular ambush scarabs and one hidden compartments. I got a lot of Harbinger Scarabs, I will say, but they're not really worth as much anymore. And then I got a couple of regular Essence Scarabs and like one Essence Scarab of Calcification. So ultimately, not that amazing. And if we look at my spreadsheet here, we can see that the vast majority of the currency I made came in the form of actual currency. Most of that was juice. Now, I haven't I have not doubled these up here. I've unlinked them from my profit at the top here just kind of for showing how they've they've shaken out here most of the profit came from harvest life force about like 85 percent of the currency value came from harvest life force very little of it really came from scarabs despite all that point investment a surprising amount came from maps because i did put all my maps and div cards into uh into my dump tab there and 
I was surprised by that with how how like I basically put no effort into uh, into juicing map drops at all. That maps were actually like very competitive with scarabs, scarabs being fully invested and maps being like minimally invested. That was kind of surprising. And then finally, I just want to kind of cap off by saying I'm taking all of the map effect notes. I'm taking the whole top hat. I'm taking the two little arms on the way up. I'm taking chisel perfection. I'm taking this wheel, although I didn't put in invasive adversaries. I haven't noticed any like loss of value by not having 10% more monster packs consisting of difficult and rewarding monsters. Maybe I'm may, you know, I never noticed this actually adding any value or really any difficulty either. And then I'll, I'm also taking mounting modifiers. These are super important. The map mod effect is super important for adding just more quant and rarity and pack size into your maps, which all multiplies the value of harvest. The downside to it, the thing you need to be careful of is if you have map mods that are bad, you know, uh, increase monster damage and increase monster attack and cast and move speed and they're like overlapping with each other in that way, that can actually make some pretty nasty maps. So you do really want to be careful of that. You do want to roll your maps up. You want them to be chiseled and alked at the bare minimum. They don't have to be eight mods. It's better if they are. Anything that increases pack size and quantity is going to be better. So it does mean, you know, a tanky build is kind of valuable. Champion is definitely great for this strategy. I would say the only times I really had any like sort of uh, bad deaths were when I had not really paid attention to the map mods that I was running. And I wound up with like three different damage mods, you know, like uh, increased monster damage and then fizz converted to lightning and then uh, <laughs> monster crit chance. Like when I had that kind of an overlap together, then I might die. But that was really the only time that I ever felt like I was uh, struggling to stay alive. But, you know, definitely I noticed that like, oh, yeah, this is actually kind of scary for just like regular monsters. And, you know, harvest monsters can be a little bit dangerous as well. All right, let's talk about the scarabs now. So we're running four scarabs. We are running harvest scarab just to force harvest in there because it's very cheap. And as I said, you're uh, you're surprisingly not strapped for scarabs. So a lot of the current strategies that are like preferred high end game strategies are like very, very cramped on scarabs available. That's really not the case at all uh, with harvest. You have harvest scarab of doubling, uh, which doubles the life and life force of all the monsters in the area, so it's it's great. You know, basically doubles the value of everything. Pretty good. The Harvest Scarabs are like one chaos. They guarantee the Sacred Grove and it saved me some points. So, you know, that's I thought that was pretty useful. And then I took um, Scarab of Monstrous Lineage, not really that useful for most strategies, but 30% increase magic pack size is kind of useful for two reasons. One, it's just useful throughout the map, gives you more magic monsters to kill and get like maps and scarabs and currency drops from, it's okay. And then also more magic monsters in the harvest. Now, unfortunately, you don't really get much life force from the magic monsters in the harvest, like hardly any at all. So I actually think this is kind of a dud of a scarab, even though it seems like it should be really good. And then finally, lastly, most importantly, is the harvest scarab of cornucopia. Now, these are, as we can see from the spreadsheet, far and away the most expensive cost component of the strategy. Like if we drop these and we switched over to crop rotation, the currency generation wouldn't be as consistent. But as we can see, look at the price difference. Look at the cost difference go down. I mean, good, good gravy. That is such a massive increase to the cost of doing a strategy. It also adds a ton of time because the harvest map bosses take a while. So I don't know that this is necessarily a bulletproof must use um, component of a perfect harvest strategy, but it was a must use part of the harvest strategy that I was doing because, you know, it kept things simple, kept things consistently profitable by adding potentially three uh, harvest bosses into every single harvest. And that that is exactly as it says, it adds up to one additional tier four seed of each type. So there was one time where I didn't have a yellow harvest or yellow crop at all in the entire harvest. And so I only got two map bar, two harvest bosses in there. And there were a couple of times where I had them in the same uh, set of like crops that were next to each other. So I had to choose one to wither over the other. In that case, I would recommend always wither the yellow boss. Do your homework, make sure that yellow hasn't suddenly rocketed in price and now it's worth way more. But if the prices are all relatively close, the yellow boss is substantially more annoying to kill, substantially slower to kill. So 
if the cost, if the profitability of killing all three bosses is relatively similar, they all throw about a thousand life force or so at you, and they have, I think, about an eight to ten percent chance of spawning a uh, sacred blossom that you can use to get the sacred crystallized life force. So all of that being said, if if you're choosing between two and Vivid isn't like suddenly twice as much twice as valuable as the others, I would say uh, Wither the Yellow guy just because he's substantially more annoying. Takes way longer to kill. I would say on average I spent, I think, probably less than six minutes per map. Um, there were some maps that took over six minutes for sure. Uh, some of the ones that would have like extra bosses on top of the three that were being added by the Cornucopia Scarabs. You know, if I had like five or six bosses in a map, that might take seven minutes, especially if they're ye the yellow boss. But then there were some, some maps where um, it probably took five minutes or less. So, you know, I think six minutes on average is kind of a safe estimate. I think that's fair. I also counted the map cost quite high. Uh, it's eight chaos in bulk to buy Jungle Valley maps. Now, I, I think that's a very, very high number. Um, and I self farmed all these maps. So, you know, I could realistically say that that was zero, but I could also potentially sell those. So we'll say about eight divines per hour. I think that is a very like conservative estimate on how much I've made from this. And I think unlike the essence strategy, unlike a lot of currency farming strategies, I played around with blight some as well. Selling blighted maps can be kind of annoying. Uh, selling life force is super easy, right? You just put it in the currency tab and you sell it like any other currency. It's it's pretty easy to do. Now, I swapped maps halfway through. I did for the first 11 maps for some reason. I did Crimson Temple. I just had some and I was like, hey, you know, what if I ran Crimson Temple and I got an apothecary or something? So I put all the apothecaries I got in this tab here, as you can see. And then I did for the other nine, I did Jungle Valley. Jungle Valley is definitely a lot better, a lot faster, and it actually has a useful div card that will drop the fortunate. And so I think that doing a strategy kind of to jump ahead of uh, my script here, doing a strategy that instead of having like Harvest Scarabs and potentially even the Harvest Scarabs of Cornucopia or maybe the Monstrous Lineage, you know, you could keep doing this strategy with the Cornucopias and the doubling, but then throwing in some like div Scarabs just to get more fortunate cards. I got two fortunate cards in the span of nine maps. That's definitely not a large enough sample size to say definitively that you're going to get one every like every map then if you run div scarabs. But I do think the possibility of getting about one every map if you're running two div scarabs, it's definitely on the table. So uh, that is certainly an option. I also think that if you wanted to kind of modify this and instead of all of those scarab nodes, you put a lot more effort into getting map drops and then you ran cartography scarabs. If you're willing to sell maps, because if you like if you use um, singular focus to force Jungle Valley to be your your primary map drop, all of your maps be Jungle Valley and you want to sell maps in bulk, you can do that. They sell for about eight chaos in bulk and they do move. People are really liking to cycle through maps really quickly to just like fish for good rewards from the league mechanic. That is still something that people are doing, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, you can make a lot of currency doing that. You could probably make about as much as you're making with Harvest. Uh, just by doing map farming and harvest as whereas the scarab farming didn't really work out that well for me, unfortunately. And just to kind of look at the stash tab here, just to kind of confirm, like like I said, I made about 23 divines in terms of raw profit and then the costs took away, uh, you know, a decent chunk of it. I mean, it's still over 100 percent, 150 percent even on the ROI. So I feel OK on that. I feel like it's relatively efficient as a farm strategy and it definitely works pretty well. I just think, like I said, I think there is definitely room for improvement. And I think the main area for improving is just like not bothering so much with the scarabs since they're really not that profitable at all and maybe putting more effort into either maps or into div cards. I think, you know, if you really want to keep it kind of like low complexity, low effort, you could stick with a very similar setup to this, not run crop rotation necessarily, or do it if you're comfortable with that. Either can be fine, but then just focus on getting like a lot of div cards. And I think all the map mod effect, all the quant and rarity, and especially pack size that you're getting out of that could really throw a lot of fortunate cards at you and just kind of be a very easy money maker that way. Definitely one of my favorite farming strategies I've, I've done over the years is just farming Mesa with a ton of map mod effect and pack size. and just getting a lot of fortunate cards and just being able to like get a bunch of divines without having to trade with anybody at all for them. 
very nice. And that is something that you could definitely make work with this. Before I move on from the setup and cost and everything, maybe the weirdest part of this, this strategy is there isn't anything you really want to run on the map device. Harvest is all the way down at the bottom on the map device. I don't remember how much it is, if it's six or seven or eight chaos, but either way, it's very expensive. Way more so than a scarab or than putting the points in the Atlas passive tree to just guarantee it and there really isn't anything else that's great. If you put points into domination, into shrine nodes, I guess you could justify taking domination, but like, I don't know that I really wanna do that, and essence is bad, and blight is bad, and rituals, like all of these things that you would put points into are worse than just taking the 8% quantity. I mean, it's 8% more stuff, right? So I kinda think you're better off just taking quantity as your map device option, which is very strange, but it, does make the most sense to me, logistically. So this is an alternate Atlas passive tree that I cooked up that would be for more map farming and it would be taking crop rotation. And I will link it in the description along with the one that I ran. Um, although I, I will say, I think the one that I ran, actually, you know what? I won't link the one that I ran. I'll link a version of, of one that I think would be a better uh, set up for using cornucopia scarabs that would be similar to what I ran, but instead of all of these uh, scarab nodes, I think it would just be oriented more toward like doing that divination card setup, uh, that divination scarab setup like I had talked about. Now I'll just cover some of the very like rapid fire go through a lot of my bullet points here. Time investment. Is it fast? Y ideally, yes. You should be as fast as you possibly can with this. Does it pull you away from regular mapping? No, mercifully, it does not. This is not a strategy where you're having to do anything kind of low tier or anything outside of maps. You are doing tier 16 maps, you are zipping through them as quickly as you can, and that's pretty great. You do want the the mods to be good you do want to like chisel alk and maybe vol maybe not you know but you do want to make sure that the mods are like not build build disabling uh, i did roll this map mod uh this map up specifically for this video i initially when i rolled it it had like three different damage mods on it including uh attack speed and then just monster damage and like i, I, I didn't want to get killed in the demo so i didn't do that uh, as for the map boss if you're doing Jungle Valley, you can just skip it 90% of the time. You do not need to kill the spider. She doesn't spawn until you go into her room and she takes a while to actually spawn. So I generally will skip her. The only time I will kill her is if I see that this wheel has filled up. I'm at 28 of 28 on pursuing the Eater of Worlds. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'll go kill her. I'll get the Eater invitation. It's not really worth all that much, but it's worth enough to go kill her the one time out of every 28 maps. And so, yeah, I'll do that. I think I've already talked about basically all of the stuff that I would do instead, like, you know, basically dropping the Harvest Scarab and the Scarab of Monstrous Lineage to either run uh, Divination Scarabs if I just wanted kind of free money or Cartography Scarabs if I wanted more maps. I was willing to kind of do the, the hustling of bulk selling maps. And so I think I'll just kind of show off a map as I've been running them thus far. So I'll just put in all the scarabs I've been running. I'll continue with the scarab passives. Maybe we'll get some good ones in this map, but I doubt it. So we're running a harvest scarab to force uh, the sacred grove in there. And then scarab of monstrous lineage, harvest scarab of doubling and harvest scarab of cornucopia. And it's everything set to harvest. We're, we're set to quant. We're going to go ahead and jump in and hopefully we get something good out of this. All right, cool. I kind of would like some some scourings and fusings. Sure, why not? So now we're just going to kind of sprint through this map, clear everything out nice and quick. Yeah, sure, why not? I'll take that all flame ember. Oh, man, there's so many fusings to pick up. I don't want to do that. Not on the video. We're just going to clear everything out nice and quick. Probably takes about a minute, minute and a half. Maybe two if I stop and pick up all the all the orbs of fusing. And as you can see, it's it's really not that bad. Like the the regular map monsters, they go down without too much of a fight. Thankfully, I think the only times that I ever got killed by regular map monsters, not harvest ones, but just like regular dudes was specifically when I ran up to a shrine. And that's nice. Anytime we can do anything to just increase the amount of value that we're getting 
through shrines like quantum rarity is the preferred option okay we found the harvest that's always what we're looking out for so we want to find it kind of make a mental note of where it is and then continue clearing out the map and looking for all the shrines because that's really what we're looking for that's our main emphasis throughout the map I didn't really get much in the way of shrines, huh? I got one shrine that duplicates my currency drops. I didn't really get any valuable currency drops in this map, but that's okay. Yeah, so as I was saying, I think the one time I got killed in doing this was just uh, like a, a shrine with uh, a lot of eater monsters that uh, just shot me down. I think it was a crit shrine, so... Yeah, normally I wouldn't clear out, but I do feel like I left a pack of dudes around here somewhere and maybe they'll throw an Eldritch Altar mod at me. No, they're not. They're not. All right. That was a waste of time. That's fine. Let's go ahead and jump in that harvest. And then we'll clear it out and then that'll pretty much be it for the map and for the video. Okay, so we're going to start with the most annoying boss by far, Nam Harem, Born of Night here. And yeah, we just kind of go around looking at all the different harvest crop sets, crop pairs. And um, we're starting with Nam Harem. He is, as I said, the most annoying guy. There's a bug that he has. There's a bug that a lot of them have. It's pretty well known. It's been posted about for a long time. It's never been fixed, but it is like, you know, soft fixable for you as a player let's see if he does it basically when any of these bosses hit 60 percent they will sort of do this weird pose where they like stand up and turn into a tree and spawn some monsters and sometimes okay he's doing it so sometimes they'll just get stuck in a loop doing their attack doing that very annoying attack where he uh stealths and then jumps out at you and stealths and jumps out at you very annoying and they won't go up into their like their tree form when they hit 60%. So the way that you fix that, if that occurs, is you just zone out of the jungle that are out of the sacred grove and you just walk around for like a second and then you jump back in and usually they will have turned into a tree. And if they haven't, you can do that like a second time. And I have never had a time where doing that twice didn't work. OK, blue is worth more than purple, so we're going to activate the blue. One thing I probably should talk about just in terms of harvest is like, how do you know which ones are more valuable? And it really just boils down to the uh, the names at the bottom of the list of monsters. I want to be careful with these guys. They're pretty gnarly. Those water pillars that they spawn are really, really nasty, especially on like increased AOE map mod. They can really hit a lot of space and really, really be dangerous. All right. This is a super, super small harvest. This is a terrible one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ignoring the brown name, which indicates a tier four boss, which is uh, important. Anytime you have a tier four boss available, you do want to take that. But the thing that you're looking for in the harvest is the names. So you'll see in this sort of pale blue, that is a rare. That is a like a valuable mob. And the number next to it is how many of them there are. So bigger number means more guys and also more life force. The sort of uh, white is like a magic monster or kind of a low value rare potentially. And then the gray is like normal mobs, magic mobs, low value. So the low value stuff you don't really care about. Ultimately, if you're comparing two and they have basically the same number of blue names, you have the same number next to them, the same number of blue names, then you just choose like whichever color is more valuable, whichever one you feel like, you know, seems better. And if neither of them has a blue name at all, if it's just like gray and white all the way down, arguably it's not even worth doing. You still can. I feel bad to ever not do one, just like it feels wasteful. But ultimately, the goal here is really to try and get as many of the blue names and as many of the, I mean, really as many of the uh, brown names as possible. But any of the blue names is also good. So, all right, fingers crossed we can get that 10% chance for the other crop not to wilt. Didn't happen. That's okay. Jannar the Omen is probably the least annoying of the three bosses. They all have some sort of special ability. The purple bosses thing is that it just does the uh, the big slam that the like bull guys do. Just a big, big slam. It's really, really telegraphed. This guy does this cone thing, as you can see. And then the yellow guy, Nam Harem, he like stealths and then jumps out and ambushes you. Oh, great. Well, wasn't ha wanting to have that happen, but that's that's on me for standing still and talking. So it's always a good idea to keep a portal down inside the uh, inside the harvest. Like first thing you do before you open any of them up, just in case you let any of the guys kill you. 
for any reason. Because that can happen. Okay, here, it looks like we're getting the bug where he's not turning into a tree. Excellent. All right, great. So I'm going to step outside, just walk around for a second, and please turn into a tree. Nope, he just wants to keep doing his charge. Okay. Turn into a tree, I beg you. I might need to break his energy shield down. There we go. I had to break his energy shield before he would turn into a tree. Don't know why. Haven't had that bug occur a single time until I started recording, but, you know, whatever. And then there he goes. He's dead. They gave me some life force. This is probably the single worst harvest I've had in all of running these. So it's kind of great that I managed to get this one for the for the video, but that's fine. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been doing. And like I said, from the spreadsheet, I think I've been making about eight divines an hour pretty consistently doing this. Looks like about eight divines an hour. And again, I think that I'm probably wasting a lot of currency by having all of these scarab nodes. I think they're they're actually pretty bad. And I think that if I had invested more into maps or just, I mean, pretty much into anything else, I think that this would actually be a lot more profitable. And um yeah, definitely something to consider. I will put a different uh, a different Atlas passive tree that I'll set up two of them. I'll set up one of them for crop rotation so you can drop the cornucopia and run this very cheaply. And then one for cornucopia, but that isn't wasting a bunch of points on scarabs that I think will be like quite a bit more profitable as well. Ultimately, I like this strategy a lot. I think it's I think it's very, very good right now. I think it's uh, pretty fun mostly painless other than me letting myself get clapped by that boss there <laughs> definitely want to be careful with the bosses a lot of dodging is required evasion is very good for this strategy just as like a defensive layer it's pretty good but i think this could wind up being a lot more profitable and i think i probably am going to play around with crop rotation and div card farming and see if i can make this uh quite a bit better and uh you know on on a smaller budget as well yeah, I think it's pretty fun. I, I would recommend this. I think it's definitely a good thing to transition out of any sort of lower level, lower investment farming strategies and, and into something a little bit more high investment, a little bit more consistently profitable. And it's pretty easy to liquidate as well. All right, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.